Welcome to the Juniper ATP Cloud IoT Learning Byte. I'm John Lusk. I am part of the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. And today we are going to go over the IoT feature within Juniper ATP Cloud. We'll learn what that is. We're also going to learn how to configure that feature. And we're going to learn how to uh, protect your IoT devices with this feature. There are many security risks that, that exist. There's a large number of devices out there. These devices are so easy to put onto a network. We need to be able to be aware of the devices that are there and how to protect them. There's so many different platforms out there. There's not a lot of time for these developers to create security on these devices. They're trying to make them and get the, the options out there. So we need to learn how to secure them ourselves. All these different ideas create security risks for our, net, for our network uh, from these devices. And so we need to find a way to protect those. Juniper Networks has done that by adding an IoT feature to the Juniper ATP cloud. What this does is it gives us integration with the cloud. It's going to provide us real-time insight into the IoT devices within our network. We're going to be able to find them automatically and then be able to write rules for them. Discover all of our IoT devices. It doesn't matter whether they're attached via Ethernet or attached via your, um, your Wi-Fi. We're going to be able to support a whole bunch of different devices through those two different mediums. What, through that, we'll, we'll create a list of all the devices, and we're going to create a whole bunch of attributes about that. Which operating system are they running? Which provider do they belong to? And things like that, so that we can then go ahead and make a dynamic address group for that uh, IoT device and be able to, to either monitor it more closely or to be able to block it from communicating with sites and places that we don't want it to communicate with. So let's go ahead and take a look at our topology. Here's the topology that we're going to run in our example today. Here we see we have an attack zone. We're calling that attack zone out there. That's our IoT devices. That's where uh, malicious activity might occur to try to uh, create a botnet or whatever the attack might be. We have a DMZ zone, a trust zone, and an untrust zone going out to the internet. So we see that we have our ATP cloud up there. Our SRX is going to attach to that ATP cloud. And then uh, automatically, after we configure it, we will be able to get uh, these IoT devices to show up uh, within a list on our ATP cloud. So to do this, we're going to configure an IoT policy under the services hierarchy for our SRX device. And once we have that policy created, we're going to go ahead and configure zone context to stream metadata that match that IoT policy up to the ATP cloud. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and get over to our SRX and take a look at this. Let's log into the SRX device so that we can make sure that we have enrolled it with the ATP cloud. So we'll go ahead and click on ATP management and hit enrollment. And we see that it says the SRX has been enrolled. We're not going to go over on how to do that in this video, but there's other learning bytes that tell you how to do that. Let's now go to the ATP cloud and go ahead and log in. We want to just verify that it knows about the device. So we go to devices. We then see we have the SRX dash gateway device that is there. So we know that it is enrolled and that the ATP cloud device does know about it. Now let's go to the monitor option. And once we click on that, we can go up to IoT devices and we see that we have uh, 27 devices that are already discovered here and you can see we have category manufacturer model and OS version across the top there these are the different options that autumn that a Juniper ATB cloud automatically finds and so we can scroll down through these and we can see we have a bunch of different devices already in this list now that we've added the other VSRX um, that we just added, it'll start to learn a few more here. 
But now let's go over and look at the configuration of this CLI on the SRX. So we're going to do a show configuration, uh, pipe, display set, pipe, match, IoT. And since we named our IoT policy with IoT in it, we have all the commands with this in it. On this first line, we see we have services, security, metadata, streaming policy. We named our policy IoT underscore profile. And then we added a dynamic filter. This enables uh, the metadata to be streamed up to the ATP uh, cloud device. We now are going to add that policy to each of the zone contexts that we want to have here. And so we see we have the trust to untrust. We have the DMZ to attack zone, the attack zone to DMZ, and the attack zone to attack zone all running this streaming policy. Now let's make sure that it's working. Let's do a show uh, services, advanced anti-malware dynamic filter status. And we see that uh, it shows that it's connected and we see some packets that have been sent and received. If we go ahead and do the, the same command, but we do a refresh every two seconds, we can see that it's automatically going along and we can see the packets going up. So we know it's sending data and receiving data back from uh, the ATP cloud. Now let's return to the ATP cloud interface and we want to go ahead and hit the IoT devices to refresh it. And we see now we have 36 devices. So it's found a few more devices uh, since we've got this uh, firewall put in place and uh, doing our configurations. And we can see we have some Philips Hue lights here. Um, we can see we got some TP link. So now that we have these devices that have come in, we have them in separated up into categories, uh, the manufacturer model and the OS version. Uh, now we can actually start to do something with them. So now, underneath the manufacturer model, let's go ahead and pick D-Link. And we're going to click on that. And what it's going to do is it's going to filter based just upon those devices from that manufacturer. So we go ahead and click on that. And we see we have six devices there. And then we get the details down below of each one of the devices. And now what we can do is we can create a feed from that. And, uh, and so we'll go ahead and hit create feed up at the top. And once we do that, we can give it a name. We'll go ahead and call it uh, D-Link cameras. And it's an IP type and the data sources from the IOT feature. And how long do we want that to stay? How many days do we want that to stay in our things before it needs to be rediscovered? And so we can change that if we want to. So let's go ahead and change that up to 10 so that it'll be there for 10 days uh, in our feed. And so we'll go ahead and hit OK, and that will create our feed for us. So now we have a feed uh, called D-Link Camera. We can go to our adaptive threat profiling and take a look at that. And there's our firewall feed that we've created, D-Link camera. Um, and you can see the devices that are uh, inside of that feed. You might have noticed that there were six devices found, but now we only have three devices here in this list. That's because if you go back and look in the video, there was only three IP addresses but there are different services under D-Link cameras that were available and created. So let's go back to our SRX. Uh, we'll break out of this and we're gonna go ahead and look at uh, that security feed and make sure that it came in. So we're gonna do show, secure, so show services, security intelligence, category summary, SEC profiling. And inside the SEC profiling, we should have a feed named uh, D-Link camera. And we look right there, and we do have one named D-Link Camera. So that came in from the ATP cloud, and there's three objects in it, just like we thought there would be with those three IP addresses. Let's return over to the J-Web to the security policies. Here we can see in the attack to untrust zone, we only have a single policy. We're going to make a policy above this one 
to go ahead and change the rules for those D-Link camera devices. So we'll go ahead and name it D-Link cameras. And then on the source, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and find that dynamic address group, the D-Link cameras. We'll pick that as our source. And then we can leave the rest of it about the same. We'll go over to the action. We'll change the action to permit. And then we'll go over to the uh, rule options. We'll go ahead and log the session close. And then we can add a schedule. And so in this way, we're only going to allow the, the permit to work at certain times of the day and not all the time. And so we could also add other options onto this also. But let's go ahead and we're gonna save it. And then we'll go ahead and commit that. So the other things that we can add on to this is we could add on IDP, we could add UD, UTM, we could add ATP to help secure the IoT devices that we have found. Uh, another great thing about this is whenever we add another D-Link camera, the IoT will find that automatically. It will be added into that group automatically and then added to this security policy automatically because of the dynamic address group. And so this is how we can use uh, this IoT to benefit us, is once we have a security policy made, all new IoT devices that fit under that automatically get pushed into this security policy uh, to secure the IoT devices in the way that you would like. This concludes our learning bite on Juniper ATP's IoT feature, and we hope you, you found this beneficial. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.